Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Bruce Wayne radio show. We are back on Zoom this week. We're still unable to get into the radio station. We might be getting closer and closer. Who knows? But Bruce Vondar here with Wayne Smith and, and our good friend and buddy Tristan Castillo is on with us. Tristan, of course, we all know Mizzou, Mizzou guy and Web City alum. And uh, had a big weekend, signed as a free agent with the Baltimore Ravens. Tristan, first of all, congratulations, man. Thanks for, I know you just worked out, just, just got done working out, and you're right on Zoom with us. So we appreciate it. It's good to see you, man. How's everything? Yeah, going? no, it's great seeing you guys, too. You know, thank you for having me. Obviously, uh, I'm, I'm thankful for this opportunity. And thank you guys again, you know, reaching out to me, wanting to have me uh, come on here and talk. Hey, talk about, and I got a bunch of questions. So, Wayne, you just jump in whenever you want. But Okay. So, so Tristan, three days of the draft. Oh, hold on, yeah, hold on, Wayne. I know you're not wearing an Arkansas shirt right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's just that what I threw too. on this morning. I, I get, I, I threw it on, and then I thought, well, we're going to be on tonight. And then I thought, no, nah, I said I'll just leave it on. <laughs> <laughs> it I don't have any Hannah's. I'm too, I'm too, uh, I'm too big to have any of Hannah's MU stuff on. So I. Oh, okay. If I had any MU, but I do have one. I might have to run up there and get it and put it on. Yeah, we're gonna have to get you a new shirt. We'll we'll get you something buck and gold. That that red's a little ugly. It is, I agree. <laughs> coach Odom's there though, Tristan. Coach Odom. I know, I know. And and my O line coach is there, Brad Davis. Uh yeah, yeah. those are my guys. So, you know, I'll, I'll I'll stay off you for now. I don't blame <laughs> you though. I don't blame you. Didn't take you long to notice that either. <laughs> anyway. Hey, talk about the, the three days, but specifically on Saturday, that was rounds four through seven. Just what was that day like for you? Like, I would love to hear like insight, like on just how you spent your day. I'm sure you're on the phone a lot with your agents and teams. And just as the day went on, t tell me about what that was like for you and what was going on. Uh, you know, it was really, it was really stressful. Uh, really stressful. Uh, obviously, you know, being the position opportunity I was, uh, you know, everybody wants to get drafted. Uh, you know what I mean? So, you know, that was kind of me wanting to go into. And obviously, I'm super thankful, especially to the Ravens organization, you know, for giving me an opportunity. Because at the end of the day, that's all I that's all I really want is an opportunity to get my foot in the door and, you know, make something happen with it. But, you know, uh, that day was really stressful. Uh, obviously, super nerve-wracking. Uh, kind of a mix of emotions, you know. Uh, Mad, sad, probably a little bit in there. Frustration. Uh, obviously, started early that morning. You know, I had a couple other teams uh, reaching out to me that morning. And we're like, hey, like, today's your day. You know, like, blah, blah. And I kind of was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm definitely getting drafted today. You know, uh, this is it. This is the, we're going to make something happen. Boom. Like, I'm so excited. You know, uh, the days kept going on, you know, answering phone calls from teams. You know, you answer your call and you're like, oh. Is, is this the one? Is this the one? And uh, no, it wasn't. You know, uh, it, it was frustrating, no doubt about it. But, you know, uh, I don't have any regrets. Uh, I don't look at it in a negative way at all. You know, uh, God has a way with things. You know, God knows what's perfect for us. And, you know, we're, he puts us where we're supposed to be. And, you know, uh, that's something that, you know, I had to accept. Uh, that, you know, he put me in the right place, the right uh, place and spot at the right time. And uh, I'm super, just super excited and blessed to, be in the, to have the opportunity that I have. And, you know, you got signing as a free agent. You're signing with a team that obviously has a need and at, at your position. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a, like you said, not everybody gets signed as a free agent. So that, even that is, is, a, is quite the accomplishment. So I, I congratulate you for that. That's a, that's, a, that's a big thing to have happen to you. So I'm real happy for you. Um, so what was that like? Like right after the draft, is that stuff happening? Or is it seventh round where you, they start talking to you about a free agent? Or is, is it several teams? Or what, what, what about that? Um, to be honest, um, I was talking with teams about end of the fifth, beginning of the sixth was kind of when we started, you know, talking to teams, you know, about the possibility, you know, going undrafted. Uh, and reaching out, you know, to sign with the team to be a free agent. Uh, kind of talked to a couple teams. Uh, and, you know, I took, I took the, you know, what I felt like was the best opportunity and the uh, best thing for me. And uh, that's just kind of how I went with my decision. Uh, I built, you know, somewhat of a relationship uh, with the offensive line coach there and the assistant coach there, you know, talked to them before the draft and during the draft. 
And I uh, just felt like, you know, it was the best fit for me and the best opportunity. And, you know, I'm really excited and blessed with it. Hey, Tristan, why, why do you feel it was the best opportunity and who is the offensive line coach there? Uh, the old line coach there, I hope I can say it right, is Coach Des Saunders, uh, Coach Des Saunders, Judge Des Saunders, and the assistant line coach there is Coach Angula. Uh, I just felt like, you know, it was kind of the best opportunity for me, you know, uh, stepping in, uh, getting an opportunity to compete uh, at an early stage. You know, uh, they had some injuries early on last year. Um, and had they had a guy, you know, Skura stepped in, did a great job uh, and played. But, uh, you know, uh, I just felt like, you know, it was good. Good opportunity. They told me they needed, you know, they needed uh, – they wanted – he wanted to find, like, a true center. Uh, and I felt like, you know, I fit that mold to, you know, come in there and be able to get an opportunity to play. And, you know, obviously at the end of the day, uh, it doesn't really matter if you go undrafted, drafted. Uh, you know, it matters what you do when you get there. And uh, I'm just excited, you know, obviously to be – in this spot to get the opportunity to go go and compete. I was looking. Well, at, it's go ahead. go ahead. Well, I was looking. Well, at Ra- I was looking at the Ravens roster today, and I noticed one of their centers is an unrestricted free agent this year. So there is a need at center. Tristan, is there? Uh, is it purely center? Do you think in the NFL, or is there a guard possibility? Uh, you know, uh, not even just the Ravens, but other teams. You know, I talked to them. A lot of them talked to me. You know, playing as like a true center. Uh, but, you know, for me personally, I like to think, and I do, do believe that, you know, I'm versatile enough, you know, to play that guard and center position, whether it's left guard, right guard, and center. And uh, so, you know, I'm just going to – I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm coming in. I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to listen to my coaching. I'm going to take coaching every day. I'm going to do everything I can to get better. And, uh, you know, obviously they know best, and they, they're going to put me in a position, you know, to what's best for me and what they think is best for me. And, you know, uh, I'm just ready to, you know, go to work. Did they? I, I see on their website that uh, Marshall Yonda retired. So that he was a guard, and he that kind of opens up a spot for you too. You know, it's a, there's a little bit of, you know, there's a little bit of um, a little uh, give and take there. You know, that there's a little movement there for you, a little wiggle room, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So they, I believe, they drafted uh, two interior linemen in the draft. Uh, one of them is kind of utility, plays tackle and guard. Uh, though they did draft a guard in the fourth. So I think from what I've, what I've talked about with them, what they've kind of discussed with me, is I'll probably be playing just mostly just center. But, uh, okay. I, again, uh, you know, where, wherever they want to put me, you know, I'm more than ready to play and excited for the opportunity. We're talking now, to- did they play an offense kind of similar to what MU did? And, and especially with, the, you know, running – and everything with a running quarterback, surely you – I mean, that's going to fit. You're going to be able to fit right into that scenario, aren't you? I mean, they have a really, really big running attack. You know, obviously, I like I like run blocking more. I like pass blocking. So, you know, I'm always I'm always excited, you know, to get into an opportunity where you look at that thing, you know, for the most part, you like to think that you're going to run the ball more than pass it. You know, uh, I haven't really got into any offensive uh, film or game plan yet. So I can't really say a whole lot for that yet, but you know, uh, I like to think so. Hey, we're visiting with Tristan Castillo, signed with the uh, Baltimore Ravens here. So this, because of this whole coronavirus thing, the leading up to the draft was much different. Usually, you know, you would be traveling to different teams' facilities and and visiting with teams. Usually, you'd have a pro day where teams would come to you. So they. That was all different. So leading up to the draft, how did you communicate? And how often, I guess, and did you communicate with other teams? And what did that look like exactly instead of a pro day or instead of visiting camps? What, what, what did that look like for you? So uh, I got home from the combine, I believe, Sunday on March 1st. Uh, and so March 1st, I got uh, back to Columbia. Excuse me. Uh, our pro day, I believe, was the 16th or the 17th of March, so two weeks. Uh, that Friday is when the SEC closed all the facilities and everything and postponed everything until about mid or late April before they redid it. And, you know, now it's – I believe it's like May 1st or June 1st, something like that. And so uh, I was supposed to have a workout the day after pro day in Kansas City 
was supposed to have some workout with some other teams, things like that. And uh, all those got canceled. You know, immediately everything's getting shut down. The NFL shut down all their facilities, shut down all, you know, people are traveling places, things like that. All of a sudden everybody's working from home. And uh, for me, you know, to be honest, it was, it was really scary, frustrating. Uh, you know, for me, I went to the combine. I had an opportunity to do things. You know, I messed up my pec. I tweaked my pec benching at the combine, uh, which kind of helped me out, which I had made a decision to hold myself out of drills uh, after I'd done that. So I had an opportunity, and then I felt like the opportunity was kind of taken away from me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was scary, you know, going forward. Uh, there were a lot of unknown, uh, just kind of hearing, you know, what things are telling you, you know. Uh, you got scouts, coaches, and things giving you phone calls, doing FaceTime, Zoom calls, uh, things like that. Uh, just trying to, you know, test your IQ, ask you questions about you, your family, your past, uh, you know, character, things about yourself, uh, what you think your strengths, uh, cons are, things like that. Just, you know, these people are just trying to discover everything about you. Uh, and then at the same time, you just, you just don't know, you know, what they're thinking. I guess. I mean, by no means, I don't think like I'm a bad person. I have any, you know, <laughs> any monsters under my bed or anything like that. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, you really don't know. Uh, it's kind of, you know, it's it's scary to think about things like that. And obviously, uh, there's a lot of people that were in the same position, you know, pro days getting canceled, not being able to work out. Uh, I remember my first week and a half, uh, I came home to web, was working out 24-7 fitness for like a day or two, and then the gym closed down. And, you know, uh, I literally was running on the treadmill or running outside. And then all I had was a curl bar with 25 pounds on each side. And I was just working out with just that before, you know, uh, my strength coach, you know, kind of hit me and a teammate of mine, Kale, back up. We came back to up to Columbia, started working out with him. But uh, there was a lot of unknown. Uh, it kind of it was scary at times. I uh, didn't really know what was going on, you know, but – uh, for it all, you know, you just kind of have to trust God. You know, at the end of the day, he knows what's best for you. Uh, God doesn't make mistakes. Uh, and so, you know, that's all. There's a reason for everything. And, again, like I said, I'm just blessed, really thankful for the opportunity. Hey, what's your timeline going forward? Uh, to my knowledge, we don't have anything until May 8th, I believe. And uh, we'll have meetings and stuff. Uh, and all that, like one-on-one meetings with the staff. But for now, everything is virtual until all the facilities open back up. And that will be May 8th? Uh, no. The, May 8th, that weekend's like a rookie mini camp kind of thing. But I, I don't know. I, obviously, there's a, there's still a lot of unknown. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, especially with everything going on. Uh, from, what, from my knowledge and from what I've been told, until all teams are able to open up all the facilities – so every team, nobody can use their training facilities. Do they do they project when that will be? Uh, I haven't been told anything, so I have no idea. So you got yeah, you guys are pretty well in the dark and everything. Hey, how will it be uh, lining up in practice against Brandon Williams? That's exciting. Uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> he went set played at Missouri Cellar and stuff like that, and you know, obviously, he's been in, uh, had a really really good career so far. Uh, been really really dominant for the Ravens. Uh, and, you know, just something, that's just something super exciting to look forward to, you know, competing against uh, that defensive line. You know, they traded for, like, Derek Wolf, uh, drafted uh, a guy, the guy from a and in the draft, got Michael yeah, Sears, things like that. You know, it's I'm really I'm really looking forward to and excited about it, just being able to compete, you know, with guys like that and uh, just get an opportunity to, you know, block them and things like that. Yeah, that'll be a challenge. And I think he'll, he'll probably help you. He could help you out being, you know, from the same area and everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to – Maybe he'll let you take him, take him or something. I don't think Brandon's going to let up on Tristan. Yeah, no doubt. I, hope I don't not. think so either. Hey, hey, you mentioned Kale. Let me just bring – let me go back to that. You're, you're talking about your teammate, Kale Garrett, who I think is one of the best defensive players Mizzou's ever had. And so you're, you're in Columbia right now working out with him. Um Man, I was surprised he didn't get drafted, too. And then also Albert O, I was excited that – I know you and Drew Locke, Tristan, I know just from because I've known you for a long time, I know you and Drew Locke are good friends. And, uh, boy, that would have been cool if you would went to Denver. But, anyway, Albert O is with Denver and is with Drew Locke. So, what do you think about that? those two guys hooking up? It's pretty cool. 
I think that's awesome. You know, I think, I think that's really, really cool. Uh, I was really excited for Albert. Obviously, Drew's super excited about it. Uh, you know, they obviously had a little connection in college, made a couple, you know, made a couple plays together and things like that. But, you know, I was just really excited for Albert. Uh, you know, I sent Albert I sent Albert a text that morning. It was his birthday, actually, believe it or not. His birthday was Saturday. Mm-hmm. Same with Tesla, happy birthday. I let him know, you know, obviously – it's not the draft's not going how you want it to go, but you know there's a reason for everything. Just keep that chip on your shoulder. And when I saw he went to Denver, oh, I was jumping up and down. I was super <laughs> excited. You know, uh, that's really cool, really awesome. I'm glad you know they get to reconnect and things like that. But uh, again, back to Kel. Uh, Kel's obviously like both those guys I'm really really close with. I'm really happy for both of them. The scenario they go into, but you know, Kel's uh, like one of my best friends. Uh, you know, played against each other in high school, knew each other in high school. Uh, coming to Mizzou together, both played uh, together, you know, the entire time we were here. And uh, I think more than anybody, you know, obviously he deserved – I feel like he deserved to get drafted, you know, more than anybody. I do too. Uh, definitely, definitely deserved it. But, you know, I think he's in a great scenario. He's, he's going to Tennessee. Uh, he's a good player. Uh, I mean, obviously you know that. Anybody that turns on film knows that. Uh, I'm sure everybody's got their opinion, you know, athletically, the stats, combine, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, when you turn on the tape, the fact of the matter is that he's a baller. And uh, I think he's going to excel wherever he, uh, he goes from here. Uh, but I definitely he's going to, you know, I definitely he's going to think – I think he's going to have a really long, successful NFL career. Hey, are you um, – I'm trying to think of the Ravens. They go shotgun a lot. I know you guys at Mizzou did that a lot too. But just adjusting to your style at center, like having a quarterback under center instead out of – a shotgun is that that big of a deal for you or not is that really no a- actually not uh well i mean so when we were at web city i was our backup center obviously we were always under center so yeah. i learned i learned how to snap under center before i even learned how to shotgun snap okay so uh i'm more you know i'm comfortable doing either uh i don't really have a problem obviously i played uh long enough in the, at web missouri now uh we shotgunned a lot uh, took quite a bit under center snaps, you know, on a couple uh, goal line play, short yard situations. But uh, I don't think I have an issue with that at all. Hey, talk about your time in Mizzou. Man, four years went by really fast. Really fast. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, red shirted your first year, but then three year starter. I think I read today 38 starts in a row for you um, at Mizzou. Just talk about the whole experience about being at Mizzou and playing in the SEC and for Coach Odom, and, and boy, you had some good teams. You had some, maybe some disappointing times, too, I know, team-wise. But I think you had, a, you had a heck of a career there. Just talk about your time in Mizzou. Well, thank you. I appreciate those kind of words. But uh, I had a blast while I was here. You know, I don't, I don't really have any regrets uh, during my time here. Uh, obviously, you know, everybody, I can do the whole, I wish we would have won games, won more games. I wish we would have you know, maybe gone to an SEC championship. I wish we could have done this, wish we could have done that. And there's a lot of wishes out there, obviously. But, you know, uh, what's out there, you know, what is on tape, you know, what's out there, what's actually written, uh, I don't have any regrets about it. Um, I enjoyed my time here. I had a really great time. I love playing for a man like Coach Odom. Uh, Coach Odom was a great, great coach, an even better man. Uh, Taught us a lot here. Held us to a different standard. You know, obviously there's a lot. You know, you go out into the media last year and the fan base and things like that, and uh, it is what it is. But, you know, I definitely think he's a great man, great person. Uh, I love that guy. Um, and, you know, I do anything for any of the guys that I play with here at Mizzou. Uh, they're all my brothers. Uh, I, I grind it with all of them. I know what a lot of them are about. And uh, I think that means more than, you know, anything else that you can kind of like read in and look into. You know, Coach Odom, he had to kind of come in and clean up a mess, didn't he? When he came in. Um, from what I was – yeah, from what I was told when he got there, yeah. But, uh, I, I, you know, I got there a semester after. Uh, our first our first season, obviously, you know, my retro year, we went four and eight. Uh, obviously, it was not a very fun time uh, for anybody. You know, you can, you can look at how you want. Obviously, we don't go out there trying to lose games. You know, we practice every day. We do all that. Obviously, we go out there and try to do, you know, everything we can to win a game. So, you know, where you – that was something that was really hard for me as a 
as a freshman, you know, I was 18 years old, uh, coming from a program like Web City where I lost two games in four years. So I come from a program like that. My first season, we go four and eight. Uh, that was something really hard to, you know, kind of like swallow and go through, I guess, as such. I had really been used to losing like that. So my first season was – it was really frustrating. Uh, obviously, not just for me, but for everybody. Uh, we were able – obviously, in the next year, we started 1-5. Uh, before we won six straight games, went to a bowl game. Yeah. You know, it was – there. when you say there was bad times, there was a lot of hard times. I'm not going to say good, that. There's some good wins. Losing, yeah, no, I, I hate losing more than anything. So, you know, obviously, when that was happening, it was not – Nobody was having fun. But, you know, you go back and you look at all the wins. I mean, I had a blast. When we played at Florida my sophomore year, we beat them. They were ranked, like, in top ten in the country at the time. Yeah. Uh, That was a super fun experience. Going to Purdue, kicking a field goal with time running down, winning the game. That game was super fun. Well, especially since the year before, they boat raced you guys. and. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that game, Tristan. Thanks. Yeah, that was was an interesting game. We had – I think we had, like, 50 – we had like 15 or 16 snaps in the first half <laughs> on offense. Yeah. It was, then, uh, yeah. To go to their half place of them, the I think half of them, I think half of them were offside penalties. <laughs> it was, hey, uh, Tristan. It was take them. Uh, hey, how do you account in those three years? How do you account for the up and downness? You know, go to Florida, beat Florida, have the real big wins. I think you went to South Carolina. You know, and you guys had some really big wins. And then it's just like you come in the next week and you got, you know, maybe somebody else. I mean, okay, let's just say you got Alabama or somebody. And let's just say that um, you, do, you don't play very well against them. I mean, you go and you play real well against one, one team and then you go to another. And uh, I'm, I guess I'm kind of – yeah, now I'm back. And then you go to another team and, you know, you – you know, you kill somebody, and then the next week you don't play so well. Or you play for a stretch of two or three games, you play real well, and then you get up against somebody, and then you don't play very well. What was the inconsistency there? So, I guess for me to say, uh, I mean, it's an SEC. Uh, I yeah. guess that's the best way to put it. You know, uh, it doesn't matter who you're playing that week. You got to bring your best game every week. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, you look at, uh, you look at last year. Uh, we beat South Carolina, who beats Georgia. Uh, we go, we went five in a row, whatever, and we beat Ole Miss for homecoming. And we go to Vandy, and we lose to Vanderbilt, at Vanderbilt. Uh, the weekend. That one hurt. Yeah, no doubt. At that time, you know, we were the number one in the East. And you go and you lose that yeah. game. And, I mean, that's just – that's just is what it is, you know. Uh, you got to bring your best every week. You can't have those games where, you know, uh, you're just like, oh, it's just so-and-so. Uh, no, like everybody, you can, any team can get beat at any time, any week. I mean, you, guys, you see all these middle conference schools always beating these power five, upsetting them, quote unquote. But, you know, everybody, they're at, they're at a D1 school for a reason. Everybody's got players, D1, D2, D3, NAIA. It doesn't matter where you go. There's, there's ball players everywhere you go. Do you, looking back on that Vandy game, do you think that kind of spelled the demise of, uh, of Coach Odom? Um, that's some tough because that was that was a pivotal game. Uh, I want to say that. Um, I mean, for me, uh, personally, uh, I think it was unfair, obviously, what they did at the end of the season. I mean, you go look at his four first four seasons, uh, he's the most wins head coach. The only reason why we don't go to a bowl game this year is because of something he couldn't even control, he wasn't even the coach here at the time when it happened. Uh, nobody on our staff was even there at the time when it happened. None of the players, none of the coaches. So, you know, uh, for him to, you know, go and get fired, uh, obviously six and six isn't what we wanted. Nobody wanted that, especially us, and especially him. I know how much, you know, he works and how much time he puts into it. Nobody wanted to go six and six. But, you know, to get fired uh, off having, you know, a third year in a row bowl eligible team, uh, most wins, first four seasons. Uh, they had a pretty good recruiting class, I think, going into it before he got fired. And I don't know. In my eyes, uh, I, th- I definitely think it was an unfair and it wasn't the right thing to fire him at the time. But, you know, I'm all for drink wits in them as well. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try to badmouth Mizzou uh, 
Uh, obviously, I'm a Tiger. Uh, I'm, I'm all for all the success and all the future success they're going to have. You know, they got a great program going there. I know that's a good coaching staff. Uh, just talking to some of the guys that are still there. And, uh, you know, I'm really excited for them, too. Hey, you know, some, you know, sometimes when you have a coach like that and he does, he really does a good job and sometimes he gets a bad rap like he did. I felt he kind of got a bad rap. I wasn't an Odom fan when he came in, but I tell you what, when he left, I was really an Odom fan. But I think sometimes when you get a bad rap like that and you have a time to step back and you kind of, you kind of review your, your career there at MU and everything. And I know he's an MU alum and everything, but, I think when he goes to Arkansas and I think when he goes down there and has a little bit of time to reflect and then do a good job down there, you might see him land somewhere else and either, either there or somewhere and maybe at Arkansas build a name for himself. I, I, I don't think you've heard the last of, of Odom, coach Odom. Yeah, no doubt. I definitely think, you know, he'll be a head coach again. Uh, I don't know when or where, but you know, he went from the head coach and now he's a DC back in the SEC again, you know, his name's got meaning behind it. He's a good coach, uh, cares about his players, uh, knows football. So, you know, I definitely think he'll be head coaching again. Uh, obviously, you don't know when, don't know where, but you're 100% uh, right. It's definitely not the last time he'll be head coaching and probably not the last time he'll be head coach in the SEC. Talking to Tristan Castillo, we'll, we'll just spend a few more minutes with you, Tristan. We appreciate you stopping in with us. Have you met Coach Drinkwitz or not? I have. Uh, I've had probably two or three conversations with him. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I've sat there and just talked yeah. his head off, and we just like sat there and just talked a whole bunch. But uh, from the conversation I've had, you know, I think he's a good guy. You know, the conversation I've had with teammates, uh, they all really like him. Uh, they're all really excited, you know, for the future and things that he's going to do. And obviously, you know, you look at his tenure, he's been really successfully offensively. And so, you know, I think he's going to bring in, uh, you know, a lot of good – uh, offensive, you know, schemes and things like that, plays, whatever you want to call it, however you want to call it. And uh, I think that, you know, I think he's going to have a really, really good uh, team here in Mizzou. What do you remember about, like, if you had to pick a game or two at Webb City, like what stands out? Or teammates or Coach Rod's story? or But what do you think about <laughs> most, maybe, when you think about being uh, – so well, I think about you. Webb City, you know, I always I think about my boys, you know, my teammates. Tyson, Colson, Channing, Caden Roy, Newby, uh, guys like Goddard, Dalton Ford, uh, Connor, Taylor, Evan, uh, Keontae. Uh, I mean, you just look at like, my time there. Uh, you know, I got nothing but good memories. Uh, I mean, I definitely don't have any regrets about high school football. No. Uh, we went into that. Um, I felt we were pretty successful right there. But, you know, I was just like, Coach Ryan, that, you know, means a lot to me. Uh, he was there with me Saturday uh, when I was going through all that. You know, it meant a lot. Uh, obviously, uh, he's been a really, really big figure in my life. And it means a lot, you know, for him to do that and be there for me. But, you know, football-wise, the that website, I mean, I look at those guys like Colson Crane, my our senior year, played with two torn labrums, all state, uh, defensive player of the year, I think in our conference, or whatever. Uh, didn't get it, Kel beat him out for all the defensive player of the year across the sport. But uh, <laughs> I mean, you look at, you just look at those kind of things. Uh, obviously, something that always pops out, you know, the one yard line state game, mm. uh, last play ever in my high school career. Um, Don't bring that up. Don't bring that up. Gosh, dang. Uh, I know. Man, how positive has this guy gotten that you bring something like that up? Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's hard not to talk about it. That, that's my last – that was my last high school football play that I've ever played. Gosh. On your line state game, we fumbled it. That's Were you – did you play in the Harbor game? Because I know Tyson was the quarterback down there at Harbor at their new stadium. Are you uh, talking about when we lost or when we won? I thought when we won and Greek had to come in and play quarterback because Tyson just got I was. beaten out of it. Yeah, Tyson Tyson sprained both of his ankles. I yeah, remember I remember that. that. I remember that. Tyson sprained both of his ankles. And I remember Greek, Greek came out and said, don't worry, guys. We're about to go down. We're going to win this game. And I mean, it was, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Andrew <laughs> Greek, here we go. And I think the first, I think the first play we ran like, uh, R80 something. I know it was A's protection because there was a rollout to the right. 
he throws the ball to Blake Harrison. Harrison goes down the field like 40, 50, 60 yards or whatever. Yeah. And we, I, I remember we got, we were on like our four or five yard line and he, we drove all the way down, punched it in, win the game, whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously I remember that game, no doubt. That was a big game. That was, that was a neat one to look back on and, and and then the Carl Junction game at Webb City in that drizzle, freezing drizzle. Oh yeah, I I always remember that game. I'm not gonna lie, you know. Uh, looking <laughs> back on it, I I got worked that game actually. Zeke Wall, uh, <laughs> they, you know, he, he was a good player in high school. You know, in high school I didn't give him enough credit, but you know he was a good little player. Uh, I remember I remember playing that game. I had sprained my ankle like the week of that practice. And I remember just looking up film like, dang, like, I had to go block Zeke Wall for an entire game. This kid, just, he has a motor nonstop the entire time. And it's just like, all right, well, here we go. Let's do it. And <laughs> obviously, you know, you go back and you look at that game. And I don't know how, by what luck or whatever, we really lost. We had lost. We, had, they, we missed that field goal. They get the ball back. Literally, I think it was like, what, 50, 60, 50 seconds or a minute left in the game. And Trey Gibson comes out and punches that sucker out. and get it. We get the ball back. And I remember we ran – we put Colson in. Yeah. Colson yeah. just cleared out the lane. Yeah, Pulled I remember back, that. yeah Just right. lead blocking up onto the Packers, just pancaking dudes. And Burroughs and Ryan and up for a touch. And I remember that. That game, that game was a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. Obviously, it was pouring rain. It was like 10, 10 5 degrees. Mm. There was puddles of water everywhere. Every, every step you took, it, you know, water's coming out of my cleats. I'm wrapped up like a pretzel. <laughs> I got both my ankles taped. Got my wrist, shoulders wrapped up, everything. Uh, and, you know, and we and we came out one of the game. Uh, I still – this is that I'm telling you. They had us beat. They all did. they had they to do was set on the ball, didn't they? That's all they had to do. And, you know, uh, their quarterback, who fumbled, is a good friend of mine, DeVore. And, yeah. you know, every time, every once in a while, they give him crap for it and all. But he was a good player, too, now. Uh, I mean, you go back, I think, over my four years, uh, not, you know, no disrespect to, obviously, the guys that are playing now and the guys after him, but I think during my four years was probably the best football in southwest Missouri during that time. And I'll still argue that to this day. Uh, you look at Webb, me, Keontae, Dalton, Taylor, Kate Roy, Colson, uh, Tyson, uh, Taylor Arburn, all those guys. Uh, you look at the two classes in 15 and 16 who all went on to play college football. Uh, you go to Nixa, Logan Tyler, Alex Murphy, Chase Allen. Uh, they had, I know they had a couple of D2 guys. You go to Willard. Uh, Forrest Merrill went to Arkansas State with Dalton. Uh, Hunter Year again, Miami, Ohio. Uh, you go and look, Carthage, I think, I think, what was it, my junior year? Carthage was in the state champions. Not Carthage, Nixa was. We were. Uh, Rockhurst was in it, and we had beaten Rockhurst that year. Uh, I mean, I, just, I think the best football for a while was during the, that time. And, you know, I'm really looking back on it, obviously, it was a lot of fun. I have a lot of memories from my four years in high school, a lot of memories from my four years in Mizzou. And I was really thankful for everything, you know, that's happened. For me. Hey, I got a couple story. I got a story about Tristan. I had Tristan Lane in class his junior and senior year. And Tristan would always get me like on the topic. We just talk sports probably more than we should have in class. <laughs> so I'd say, all right, Tristan, it's time to get back to work. And then he'd be all right. And then he'd bring up like LeBron James or something. We'd, go off for 20 more, 20 more minutes. But I remember Tristan would be on his phone. Like, and I'd say, Tristan, get off your phone. He'd say, but it's the offensive line coach from the University of Minnesota. And I'd be like, yeah. bring that up here. Let me read it. You know, so we <laughs> read it, you know. And, and I remember one day, Iowa State came to school and visited him. I don't know, Tristan, if it was their O coordinator or their O line coach. And uh, he, you went out to see him and then you brought him back into our class and you introduced him to me, and the three oh, of yeah. us had a nice conversation. That's the stuff I remember about you, man, just all the times we got to share together in class, man. That's why I'm so happy for you, man. I, I, and I have no doubt you're going to be awesome with this new opportunity, man. And there's a lot of people back home rooting for you. 
So I, I know you're going to do great things, man. And well, Von I, I I ran a little tighter ship in my class. I, I wouldn't I couldn't do with that. him. <laughs> I was a little bit more academically inclined. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, I, I try to get Tristan. I'd ask him about things he wouldn't know about. Like I'd say, let's talk hockey. And he'd say, well, the Blues are in second place in the Central. And Terry <laughs> Sinclair, I'm like, what are you doing? You know every sport? What's going on? <laughs> well, you have a great sports fan. I couldn't believe it. But. Hey, Tristan, I got two questions for you. And right. they're, they're kind of together. And, and it's kind of going back. Keontae, what's, what's happened with Keontae? Has he still got another year at Pitt, or did he try to get into the draft, or did he get in a, you know, did he get signed as a free agent, or did he try to go? And the other thing is Dalton. What, what's, the, what's the deal on him anyway? So Dalton, I believe, he may, I don't believe, I know he did, but the belief part is I'm trying to get the year right. Dalton medically retired. Um, wow. He had some bad things happen, you know, with his disc and his back. Yeah, okay. And it kind of turned into, you know, of, uh, hey, do you want to keep playing football? We can keep, you know, giving you these medication shots and things like that. Or you're going gonna to have to have a back surgery later on, and you're probably going to be walking with a cane. And it kind of turned into a, hey, um, basically football or life for Dalton. I yeah. know that. Uh, obviously, Dalton, he's – uh, just got engaged actually this past weekend. Just got engaged. Uh, got a baby on the way. I'm really excited and happy for him. Uh, so he made retired, uh, finished, graduated. He's living down in Oklahoma now. Arkansas uh, State. Keontae, Keontae finished up at Pitt this last year. Uh, he went to K State's Pro Day and dominated, had a phenomenal Pro Day. I think he ran like a 434 or 437, something like that on his 40. Uh, looked good in drills from what I was told. Uh, was talking to teams leading up to the draft and draft day. Uh, last time we talked, uh, he was still waiting on the call. So I don't want to speak too much on that. I don't know, you know, a whole lot of information. So I'll let Keontae speak for himself. But I definitely think uh, he has an opportunity. He should have an opportunity to play in the league. He'll probably get – he'll probably sign like you did then probably. I think so. And if he gets an opportunity, he he will, he he'll he'll be he'll be like you. He'll do a great job. Oh, he'll he yeah, he'll he'll shine out. He, if if Keontae gets opportunity, he'll be it for sure. Still, I mean, the guy yeah. the guy's been making plays since he was in high school, from high school to college. Yeah. He's been he's been all over the field. I mean, you don't get a whole lot of prospects that play offense, defense, and special teams and dominate on all three phases of the game. Uh, that's a really rare prospect, and you know. Uh, Whoever gets him is definitely going to get a steal of, you know, a player, not only a player, but a person. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck going out there to Baltimore. You know, I got Han Hannah's out there in D.C. <laughs> There's a couple of Web City Mizzou kids out there. So, <laughs> you're, you're going to be – you're going to be in good uh, – you're being good hands out there with the Mizzou people and everything. But, boy, I tell you what, I wish you could have got a little closer to home like Kansas City or something. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I appreciate you guys for all the kind of words, you know, having me come on here. Uh, you know, obviously talk ball, talk past, present, everything uh, means a lot. Obviously, I hold you, I hold both of you high up in regards as people. Not only you, I had you guys as teachers, talked to you guys when I would come back to school and things like that. You guys were always checking in on me. So I really do appreciate you guys having, you know, come on and talk here. And uh, I guess I want to use this opportunity as well, you know, thank everybody back home. Uh, my phone's been blowing up for the last couple of days. So, you know, anybody that I haven't hit back or that I've missed, uh, thank you for everything. Uh, every, everybody that's helped me get here, you know, it takes the wins. Of my mom said the other day, you know, it takes a village, you know, to raise a kid. And, you know, it's definitely what Web City did. Uh, the whole entire community, you know, me just running around the town as a kid. Uh, I was really appreciative, for, you know, where I came from. Uh, everybody that helped raise me and get a part and to get me to this opportunity and get me in this position that I'm in. That, you know, to be honest, you know, come from a small town like Webb, I would never, ever imagine being able to, you know, get this opportunity, and here it is. So I'm really appreciative of everybody. Uh, I'm really grateful for where I came from, and I uh, thank you guys for it. Yeah. No doubt. Well, man, we love you. We're rooting for you, and we're going to keep track of you, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon, Tristan. Thanks, man. Great time. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We'll let Tristan get out of here, and we'll we'll kind of wrap it up. When he's just, uh, you know, you and I both know him really well. 
you know, the, the Carthage game this year at football, he came, they had a bye yeah. week and we were down on the sideline, you and I, and Tristan came and sat, sat there, stood there with, with us and the whole game and just talked with us. And, you know, the, the dude works hard. I mean, I have no d- doubt about his ability or his work ethic. And like you said, he, all he really wanted was a chance and he's got one now with the Ravens. And yeah, it's, it's too bad he didn't get drafted. I know he's upset about that and he admitted to that. But, man, he's, he's got the right perspective. He's looking forward, and he knows he has an opportunity here. So, you know, we – Well, I think the thing about him is, is, you know, and you know this as well as I do, you know, and talking to him and being around him in high school and everything, he is so darn positive. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm not going to mention names or anything, but I know of another person that went out there to the same place, and really I don't think he was as positive as what Tristan is. Tristan, uh, I, Tristan is the kind of person he's going to find a way. He'll yep. find a way if he has to be on the practice squad for a while, and then and then move in. And he doesn't care. You know, I was reading some stuff on him on uh, CBS, and they said, you know, he's the kind of kid. He's got a high football IQ, uh, but he's going to be a developmental type of player that they will spend some time with and develop him into what they want him to be. And I think he's got the. Uh, he, he's got the backbone to stay with him for a while. And because uh, and, he, wa- he wants this to work. He doesn't, he's not going out there just to say, I, hey, I got to go to minicamp with the uh, Baltimore Ravens. Right. He's, out there to, he's out there to make the team. And uh, that's the attitude you got to have. And he's been preparing for it for a long time, too. I mean, this has yeah. been a goal for a long time. And you're right. I, I think things are going to turn out well for him. But say he hits a roadblock with the Ravens, that he won't that will just be a, 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 a roadblock. He won't give up. He'll keep going. You know, a lot of these guys go, go play in Canada or whatever. But, but no matter what happens with the Ravens, and, and I hope he can make the team or get on the practice squad or something, but he won't stop. I mean, he'll keep going and he'll keep going and giving himself more opportunities. So I think he's got a ways to go before his NFL career is done. I, mean, I think he's got a, a nice future coming up for him. Yeah, I think he, he's one, he always he always strikes me as one of these guys that coaches, you know, you got one you got one of these kids that is always around, he's like a gnat. Yeah. You know, and he's always around and he's always in the middle of stuff and he's you know, he's he he's right there but he's really not there and then you know, and then he breaks through and you go, you know, he just kept hanging around and hanging around and hanging around until he he kind of broke and that's the kind of person he is. Yeah. And, you know, he knows he knows he knows his his limitations. He knows what his whole, you know, everything about him. He knows what he's got. And I don't think anything's going to surprise him. And I think he will try to do is like Jerry Kills said, you know, I'll just outwork you. And I think that's what Tristan will do. He'll outwork him. Yeah. And I, I think I think he's got a bright future. And like he's like you said, he'll find a way to make it work. Yeah. And you mentioned it, just the football sense. And he, he's a really smart kid, you know, when it comes to football and I got his sports knowledge is, you know, out of this world. He really, he's just, you sit and talk to him like we did or one-on-one. He's just, he's very impressive when you talk to him. Great attitude. So, yeah, I, man, he's just the perfect kid that if, if somebody's going to make this work, it's going to be somebody like Tristan. And I'm not just saying that. Yeah. I mean, I, I truly do believe that from being around him. And I know he's not going to give up and he's going to keep going full, full steam ahead and keep, keep his eyes looking ahead at all times. So. It's yeah, you know, they'll funny. tell him things. They'll tell him things, you know, here's what you need to be working on. Shoot, he'll go out and he'll blow it up. Yeah. You know, he'll work on it. He'll work on it until – I got tickled at him when he brought that – I wasn't going to say a word about that when he brought that Zeke Wall story up. I remember standing on the sideline that night. Zeke Wall had like 16 unassisted tackles that night. Yeah, I remember. And, that. and Tristan was basically injured. I mean, he was injured trying to play Zeke Wall. Well, you can't be injured trying to play Zeke Wall. No, it's period. hard enough. Yeah, it's hard enough. Oh, well, Zeke just Wall is just a different animal, though, too. He, well, he, and that's why I say, Brandon Williams, you better be very healthy to handle that guy. And if you're playing center and he's on you, you better be ready to, you better be ready to go to war with Brandon Williams. Oh, so, sure, sure. But I but think you know he'll what? be a great You know what? You know, Brandon's a different animal. but And I'm not comparing the but. He had, Tristan held his own in the SEC. I mean, there's something that needs to be said about a guy who's a three-year starter in the SEC because he saw SEC defensive line at week in and week out. Now, you know, there's something to be said for that. 
So, you know. Yeah, he played against handle. Alabama and Auburn, and he those two it. lines are D lines are they're and good. Did, and, and Tristan did a good job too. He, yeah, you know, he was no joke. He did. He held his own and and was an anchor on that O line for Mizzou. He had a great Mizzou career, and and uh, man, wish nothing but the best for him. Yeah, he was ready to go. I mean, there's no yeah, you yeah. can't fault a kid for that. Yeah. And, oh no, no. Yeah, I don't care if he was drafted or not. I mean, he he made the best decision for him, and he told me before the draft even started that he's at peace with whatever happens. He's ready to go to work, and that's just the attitude he has, you know. So. Yeah, I, I think it'll work out fine for him. It'll be fun to watch him. It's yeah. always fun to watch Web City kids. It'll be fun to watch Keontae, see what happens to him. Uh, but it's always fun to watch kids kind of advance up, and even area kids, you know, to see them how they advance up through college and then they'll get into the pros. And, you know, and if that's what they can do, then, boy, more power to them. Yeah. More power to them in that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when they – because they have a rookie camp, and this whole corona thing is just – a pain in the butt, right? I mean, I, I hope it doesn't affect his mini rookie mini camp, but it probably will. Um, so it may things may be on hold for a while, you know, for Tristan and the other rookies and all the NFL for that matter. So, you know, we have to be patient, and I know he'll keep working. You know, he's in Columbia right now, and I know the weights coach at Mizzou kind of set him and Kale Garrett up with some, and he talked about that a little bit, but yeah kind of set him up with some weights and some programs. So he's back in Columbia working out. And, um, he'll be ready. He'll be ready whenever they call him and tell him it's time to come. You know, he'll be ready to go. Yeah, he'll be ready, just as ready as anybody else. Because yep. everybody else is in the same boat. Same boat. Yep. So, well, I appreciate it, Wayne. It was fun to talk to Tristan, and, and uh, we'll, we'll catch up with him again. Yeah. Yep. All yeah, right, we might man. be able to catch up with him in a month or so. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get back him on here, and we'll – yeah, we'll get an update with him. Well, thanks, Wayne. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching as well. And uh, we'll see you next time.